Have you ever thought about not loving your man? Shoe up, shoe up. Really makes you wonder, you know. Anyways, hello everybody, welcome to another episode of the FVI, also known as First Volume Impressions, brought to you by me, that manga dude. This is the show where I go and give my first impressions, or my first thoughts and ideas and whatever, about a first volume of a series or a one-shot, which is going to be the case today. It's going to be an interesting one, so let's hop right into the video. Let's go! Whoosh! Alright, like I said, we're hopping right into this one. So this is going to be a really interesting one, because I think this is going to be the first time in this show, and uh, just about any of my kind of reviews where I'm going to be talking about a, a volume of manga that was released by a smaller publisher. So let's get started. This is an awesome release that I actually managed to find in a used bookstore. Um, so I'm excited to show it off. And that is the wonderful, the colorful, the beautiful Rabbit Game by Miyoshi, brought to us by Glacier Bay Books. So, if you don't know, this is a uh, rapid game, like I just said, so it's created, the story and the art is by Miyoshi, we have editing, and the design is by, oh gosh, I'm sorry I don't know how to pronounce your name, but it's Emuru, I believe, the translation by Ryan Parker, and the lettering by Lyndon Moffat, or Moffat, Moffat, I really, I really hope I got these names right, I'm sorry, there's not a lot of, uh, it's not hard, to, it's not easy to find translations or, you know, people saying these names, but I think I got them right. If I didn't, please leave me, let me know in the comments. But let's jump in what I always talk about first, and that is going to be the cover and the spine. And holy moly, this is an absolutely gorgeous spine. Like, I love the popping of colors. I love, like, the nice mix of, like, the art from the, the manga itself with these, like, kind of surreal art color in the background with the plants and the heavy and interesting line art that's going on the spine's really cool too uh you know mimics the back and the front the back is really nice has a really bright green color and uh yeah i just think it's really it's just a really nice release in general it's a uh, like a thicker cover here and there so i do prefer and like that especially for a smaller volume like this it's only I believe, uh, I believe I read on right stuff that it's only 80 pages, um, and, uh, you know, I can't read, so <laughs> that is a guess, and I think I'm right about that, but let's hop right into the characters. So, this is what we got. We got three characters that, uh, we really uh, need to talk about or not, up to you, uh, but to me, these are the three characters. There is Kiritani Toru, he's the main character. Uh, you're not going to see him on the cover here, but basically he's like this quirky kid who uh, ends up, you end up like learning about his story throughout this, throughout this story, of course. Uh, as you meet the other characters, uh, you, you notice he's like just a young guy, really impressionable, very confused, and seems to be forgetting things, which I think is really interesting. And uh, his character... Uh, doesn't necessarily change, but I think he has the most interesting dynamic out of the three of them because he seems to be the one that is having the most issues, I would say. And uh, it's just like generally, I don't know, I like his character a lot within this this volume here. After that, we have Inaba, who's going to be the girl that's on the front here. She's just like really quirky and odd throughout the entire series. Uh, very much seems like uh, she says things to get a uh, response from people. And I know people just like her, so I'm like... <laughs> Wow, that's uh, it's a little, it's a little too close to home. But overall, I think her character is also very interesting. I think it's really well written, um, especially throughout the story. I think she's really interesting. And finally, we have the character Kawamoto, who is basically their, um, is Kiritani's and Inaba's mutual friend. Uh, he no longer goes to school, and uh, without spoiling anything, he's part of something that's a little bit weird. Uh, but yeah, he plays an important role in both of their lives and uh, how they're connected to, with each other. So just genuinely really interesting. I think all the characters are written very well, uh, especially for what the story is going for, which is like this uh, high school slice of life, surreal horror, kind of a lot of things, really. Um, and I think it does it all really well. So let's hop into the story here. Uh, as the story goes, basically, it's about the three of them. Uh, specifically more Kiritani and Inaba. Kamoto shows up here and there, but uh, it's definitely not as important. Uh, but basically, Kiritani uh, meets up with Inaba and they start talking, and they, he kind of starts to fall in love with her, and uh, like, I guess, becomes more like obsessed. Uh, so she finds this game called Rabbit Game, which is this little game here, uh, and she tells him, tells Kiritani to go play it. And uh, yeah, so it's about. <laughs> That's, I think, the shortest gist of it. I really don't want to try to say more than that because, like, a lot really goes on in this 80-page uh, volume. Like, there is a significant amount of craziness that goes on. So, to not spoil it, I think I'll leave it right there. But overall, I think the story is 
uh, very interesting, and I think it really gets you thinking. I mean, <laughs> to give you an idea, basically, I had I as soon as I finished reading it, I actually skimmed over it again just so I can see if I can like catch some stuff that I didn't see before. I was like, what, like what just happened? <laughs> it was it was a lot to process, and I think uh, that's what makes it so interesting, especially for being such a short like short volume, only eighty pages. Like I said, probably take you about like a half an hour to forty five minutes to read, if even that. Uh, but yeah, it really gets you thinking, and I think that's what's so cool about it is that like it's a nice mix of like the surreal and also of like slice of life, very real um, feelings, writing. I don't know, it's just it's just like done really well. I think the story is really nice. So let's jump right into the art. So I think the art is probably my favorite part about this. Uh, I like I, obviously I like talking about the art the most in most of my FBIs, but I think this one specifically it really shines through because it's like this really bizarre surreal stuff that happens throughout while also mixing in just very normal things like a city and just like oh these two are holding hands or characters are just like talking or whatever and i think it's like it does it well so i'm gonna show some things this isn't gonna be a spoiler alert i'll probably throw it up on the comments here uh because i'm gonna be showing some things that might be considered spoilers for the story so just as a heads up if you want to read rabbit game i would stop for a bit here uh and i'll give my like overall like statement after this so looking at this i think there's just like a beautiful mix of like 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 i said the surreal mixed in with the normal so you have like the normal here like where a lot of characters are just sitting around and i think like miyoshi has a really good feel for humans and how to draw them um a really nice mix too of using like negative space and positive space and to give you an example of what that means Negative space is going to be the space that's usually around a character or around an environment that is to fill up uh, like an area. So like if you were to take a picture here, like this is an example, uh, the character here would be in the positive space along with here and then the negative space would be like this area. So I think it has a really nice like really nice flow to it. Uh, I like the use of uh, the screen tones using dotted and using like just the flat colors for the characters and then also like mixing them back and forth. I think the trans like the transitions too between different like different parts of the frame are really nice especially with this one here like you see a character like sitting here it's raining and then you, you it moves you down and it uses like the framing to also move down with the art as well and i think that's just super cool so overall yeah i think the art's really good um i think i flashed it here like <laughs> it gets really trippy but I, I think it's just super cool it's this really nice like mix of uh like i said surreal art uh mixed with that nice like manga designs that you'd like to see um, and I think it just mixes all that stuff really well, and I think uh, it's definitely worth a read just for the art. So, to put it in perspective, or to give my final thoughts on the art, I think if you're going to read this, uh, definitely read it for the story, then look at it for the art, and then, you know... Do it however you want to read it, but that's how I would prefer to read it is you read it first by like, okay, try to get what the story is and then try to incorporate how the art connects with the story because it does it really well. So, final thoughts. I think Rabbit Game from Miyoshi is a must read. I think it's really, really good. It'll really get you thinking. It'll have you looking up conspiracy theories or whatever you want. Uh, I looked it up almost immediately just to see like what other people thought about it. And I wasn't able to find too many reviews, but I did find one review that uh, helped me to kind of like get scatter my thoughts and be like, oh, okay, I kind of agree with what that person was saying. And uh, yeah, overall, this is just a really great volume. Uh, just a wonderful release from Glacier Bay. I'm really excited to read more of Glacier Bay Books' releases because I do have two uh volumes that they are publishing hopefully coming in soon i'm not really sure I'll probably get that checked out but yeah this is definitely a must read for me i would say if you like your surreal horror if you like your slice of life if you like your uh your romantic uh kind of like coming of age story uh with a you know huge mix of surreal horror and surreal like thriller stuff this is a must read definitely a must check out honestly if you're like one of those people who just collects for like aesthetics or whatever i mean even then this looks really great on your bookshelf so not that i'm saying that you should do that but i'm saying you should buy it because it's worth reading um but yeah that's gonna do it for this review of rabbit game from miyoshi uh let me know what you think about it in the comments because i haven't seen a lot of people talk about it um and i want to see more people talk about it because i think it's definitely a 
a, a worthwhile read and especially because it's like so different from everything that's really seeing in terms of popularity so you know if you like your indie comics this is definitely right up your alley so you know what to do you can like comment favorite and subscribe to my channel I do appreciate it for all those things. If you do any of those things, you guys are awesome. And if you don't choose to do any of that, well, thank you for making it to the end of the video because I really appreciate it. That means you spent around 10 minutes uh, listening to me ramble and talk and kind of have thoughts and kind of have no thoughts at the same time. No thoughts, head empty. That's me all the time. So that's going to do it for this episode of the FBI, and I'll see you in the next episode.